As a Delphi programmer or learner, you will create many applications. For every application that you create, Delphi needs to save a whole bunch of files on your computer. Without some of these files, you will not be able to open your applications in the future. It is therefore very important to save your programs on a regular basis so that the files needed by Delphi are persisted on your hard drive. But that is only part of the solution. It is also important to assign proper and descriptive names to your Delphi applications because if you don't your applications will be assigned default names like Project 1, Project 2, Project 3 and so on. That can make it very difficult to identify applications that you want to work on later. You must also know where the applications and the files are saved. And because you work with so many files, it is a good idea to have a proper structure in place to organize your files and applications. Without a proper structure and proper names, you will get lost in all the clutter. And if you are a student, that is not a good thing. Your teacher must evaluate many programs for tests, exams and assignments. If he or she can't find your programs because it wasn't properly saved or organized, well, I think you know what will happen. In this lesson, I will show you how to organize and save your files. In the previous lessons, I created an application to demonstrate forms and components, but I didn't save it. I will go to that application again to save it. It is the application with the lime green form and the buttons, labels and edits. When saving a program, Delphi will ask you to save two files, namely the unit file and the project file. The unit file has a .pas extension. Remember, I said earlier that Delphi derives from a programming language called Pascal. Well, the .pas extension is a reference to Pascal. By default, the unit files are called unit1, unit2 and unit3 and so on. But it is a good practice to provide a descriptive name when saving the unit file. I've seen a few different naming conventions for Delphi files over the years. Some programmers will assign a descriptive name like first demo. Some will call it first demo u with a u suffix. Or some will call it first demo underscore u with a underscore u suffix. The suffix indicates to them that this is a unit file. I've also seen the use of prefixes like frm first demo. The frm prefix indicates to them that this unit file belongs to a form. You must use a convention that makes it easy to identify the file for future purposes, or you must use it like your teammates are using it. If you are a student, you must save your programs and files the way that the teacher wants it, or the way that it is dictated in exam and test papers. In many exams, tests and textbooks that I've seen over the past few years, students are asked to use the following convention for unit files. If the unit belongs to a form, you use an frm prefix followed by a descriptive name and then followed by an underscore use suffix. This is also the convention that I will use throughout these videos when I save my unit files. The second file that Delphi asks you to save is the project file. In the title bar of the application you can see that the default name is project1, but it is a good practice to also provide a descriptive name when saving the project file. The project file has a DPR extension. That is the abbreviation for Delphi project. Like unit files, I've seen a few different naming conventions for the project file too. Some programmers just give a descriptive name like first demo and some will call it first demo p with a p suffix and some use an underscore p suffix. But just like the unit files, you must use the convention that your teammates are using or the convention required by your teacher. I will save my project files throughout these video tutorials with an underscore p suffix like I've seen it used in exams, assignments and tests. Although you only have to save the unit file and the project file, Delphi also creates many other files for your project. These files will normally be saved in the same place where you save your project in unit files. The files that Delphi creates will also automatically be named by Delphi. Because your program uses so many files, things can get messy. It is therefore a good idea to create a folder structure for your program. With a well-planned folder structure, your files will be easy to find and manage. You will also prevent file conflicts. Now, let's save the program. I move my mouse pointer to the file menu and click on it to drop it down. And then I click on the save as command. A dialog window pops up. The title of the dialog indicates to me that I must save a unit file. In the file name text box, you can see that the default name of this unit is unit1. We will first create a proper folder structure that we can use to organize this program and all our future programs and files. To make it easy to find, I want to create my folder structure on my desktop, so I click on the desktop button on the left hand side of the dialog window. 
I then create a new folder on my desktop by clicking on the Create New Folder button at the top of the dialog window. A new folder is created and I want to rename it to Delphi Schools Video Projects. To persist it, I click the Enter key. This folder will be the main or root folder for all my Delphi programs that I create throughout this video series. When I double click on this folder, its name displays in the drop down list on the top of the dialog window. That indicates to me that I am now inside the folder called Delphi Schools Video Projects. I will now create a subfolder by clicking on the Create New Folder button again. A new folder is created and I want to rename it to First Demonstration. And I press Enter. This is the folder that must contain all the files for the project that I created. Now I double click on the new folder to open it. As you can see, the folder is empty at the moment. Before I click on the Save button, I first must provide a descriptive name to the unit file. I will name this one FRM First Demo underscore U because it belongs to a form and because it is a unit. Also, notice the box under the name. Here I can see that this is a Delphi unit file and that it has a .pass extension. Now I click on the Save button and my unit file will be saved in the folder called First Demonstration. After saving the unit file, I can also save the project file. I move my mouse pointer to the file menu again and click on it to drop it down. And then I click on the Save Project As command. The dialog window pops up again. Normally, the dialog window opens the folder where you save the unit file. But always make sure that it is opened in the correct folder. If not, just click on the desktop button and scroll until you find the root folder called Delphi Schools Video Projects. And then look for the folder that you want to use to save your project file. In this case, the first demonstration folder and double click on it to open it. Now you can provide a name for your project file. I will call this one first demonstration underscore p. Also notice the box under the name. There I can see that this is a Delphi project file and it has a .dpr extension. Now I click on the save button and my project will also be saved in the folder called first demonstration. Notice that the title in the IDE's title bar displays the new name of the project file. There are also other ways to save your program. For example, you can click on the Save and Save All buttons in the speed bar. You can also press the Ctrl and S key simultaneously on your keyboard to save. Or you can press the Shift, Ctrl and S key simultaneously to save all. Later, you will learn how to run the application from the IDE to test it. If you try to run an application that is not saved yet, Delphi will first ask you to save your unit and your project files. I will demonstrate that in a later video. If you close an application that is not saved, Delphi will also ask you to save your program. It doesn't matter which of these methods you use to save your program and files as long as you have a descriptive name and proper file structure to organize your files. You can close Delphi now without concerns that you will lose any work because you saved your program. Before you move on to the next topic, rewind this video and follow the steps in this demonstration. Make sure that you do exactly what I did to avoid any confusion in future lessons. After that you can continue with the next video. In the next topic we will explore the files that we saved and you will also see that Delphi created many other files. You will also learn how to open the program that you saved and how to run your application. But first go and save your program.